John, uh, thank you so much for joining us this Sunday and uh, for teaching us the Bible over these four Sundays coming. We really appreciate you giving us the time and uh, just the prayer and the preparation that has gone into uh, preparing these sermons for us. So some of us in Grosvenor will know you and then other people won't have met you before. So I was wondering, uh, could you tell us a little bit just about who you are, where you're from, uh, who you're married to and so on, just to get us started. Okay, Peter, first of all, thank you for the invitation to share with the folks in Grosvenor. We're very privileged to do that and, and very grateful to do it. Uh, I come from County Antrim, uh, born in the town, near the town of Larn. Uh, went to Queen's as a student, uh, married Sandra, who was a traveling secretary with UCCF. Uh, we have three boys, uh, 36, 30 and 28, Peter, Andrew, and Johnny. Uh, yeah, and I had a late call into the ministry, Christian ministry, probably in my early 30s. I was working in agricultural research and teaching, lecturing at a college uh, in soil science and other re related subjects. So it was really in my early 30s that I was called, I felt called into full-time Christian ministry. So that was my background. Right, right. So how many years were you uh, a lecturer in Greenmount? Uh, until I was, I think I was 32 when I left that work from, right. you know, almost 24 or something like that. Uh, and I then studied theology and my ministries, almost all of that was south of the border in the Republic. Right. And we had very happy years, 18 years in Kilkenny. Uh, 15 years in Drogheda and then I had to retire when I reached 70 so for two years I was traveling from where I live in County Antrim Dundalk twice or three times a week to look after a little Presbyterian church there which had no pastor and we were hoping to try to encourage them enough to reach the stage where they could call a pastor right. which happened just some months ago so we're we're grateful for that so that's what I've been doing uh, ministry. And so um, you, you studied, uh, you did your undergraduate, you did your master's originally um, in, uh, was it environmental science? Yeah, ecology, that kind e of thing. Eco ecology. And so what was it like being a Christian um, in, in a university setting, in a college setting? Well, I suppose I loved the subject, Peter, that I studied. I, from childhood, I had an interest in the world of nature, wildlife, and so on, that kind of thing. So I, I loved the subject. I really came to committed faith in my first year at Queen's as a student. Right. I was invited to join the Christian Union. I was rather shy and nervous at the time, but that, that began a journey for me, which was such a blessing meeting so many wonderful Christians right up to the present day and hearing some of the greatest preachers that one could ever uh, be privileged to hear. Uh, John Stott, Martin Lloyd-Jones and so on. And so that was a tremendous training ground. And I was greatly inspired, I suppose, as a Christian through Christian Union years. And of course, you know a lot about that yourself. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, that's encouraging to hear, John. And uh, so what, what, what was it that brought you then from uh, working as a lecturer to uh, going into pastoral ministry? What were some of the, the motivations there, or the reasons behind that move? Well, no, number one, I was a teacher to begin with. I was teaching biological subjects, so I, I enjoyed teaching. But also I was teaching a, a young people's Bible class every week in my home church. I was involved in Scripture Union camps, CSSM on the beach, trying to teach God's word to boys and girls. And I increasingly felt a strong sense that God was calling me to set aside teaching biology, uh, to teaching his word. Right, And I think it was through all of those involvements in various team, mission teams that gave me that sense of call. Right, right. And so during those years then as a, as a minister in a, a number of congregations and a number of contexts, uh, what were some of your priorities in uh, pastoral ministry? Well, I suppose I'm looking back on it now, Peter, and I, I think I would say two things. And if I were speaking to young ministers, I would say these two things. Uh, teach God's word and love the people. 
I think those are the two priorities, feed the flock and shepherd the flock. Right. So I think we've got to love the people and teach the word. And obviously behind that, we pray that the Holy Spirit will work through our weakness. But I would say those are the two things that I feel must be kept central. Right, right. And so you're, you're retired now in inverted commas, formerly retired, but uh, you're, yourself and Sandra, I'm sure, are as busy as ever. So what, what do you spend, or what have you been spending your time doing in these last couple of years? Well, I'm back to uh, my old life in one sense. I'm planting trees, Peter. Right. I, I have two and a half acres here and I've planted over a thousand trees. Wow. So I'm planting a little wood and underplanting it with bluebells and snowdrops and various things. So that's my hobby, which I enjoy. But Sandra and I, I suppose, feel that we're still, God has given us enough energy to still be hopefully of some value in the work of God's kingdom. So we're, we're open to do whatever we can. I've been preaching quite a little bit on Zoom or you know, through uh, laptops and so on. Yeah. Uh, that's been a different experience, of course, when we're not meeting together, I find it bit challenging but uh, we've, we've kept in touch but I, I do miss the regular Sunday by Sunday preparation and I also have to say Peter I miss ministry in the Republic being right. back north there are many joys and benefits but I do miss church life in the Republic right right um, I mean obviously as you uh, teach or have taught the Bible over the years you have been uh, reading the Bible plenty um, could you give us a flavor of how you approach reading the Bible just in your own time? Well, Peter, it's interesting because being out of full-time Christian ministry, I find that it's easier now to read the Bible without thinking of sermons. Right. What you mean. I'm not trying to think, what do I get out of this to preach to others? I find myself reading the Bible. In fact, Sandra and I at the moment are simply reading through John's gospel and trying to listen again to what God says. Right. to hear freshly and it's it's been encouraging for me to hear things and see things i never saw before so simply to read and to and to listen and then to somehow try to respond in prayer and hopefully in obedience as well brilliant brilliant um we're very excited to uh, have you teaching us over the next four sundays and uh, i was wondering could you give us a little glimpse of where you will be bringing us in god's word well, Peter, I, I thought about this and I, I thought of the fact that we're all isolated. We have been in isolation now for 12 or something, 14 weeks maybe. And I thought of the Psalms that were written in times of isolation. And so I hope, God willing, this Sunday to begin the first of two sermons on Psalm 84, where the psalmist is longing uh, to be uh, in fellowship with God and his people at the temple. The famous psalm with the, the sparrow and the swallow and so on. And really in the first sermon, we're thinking, I think, about what are those things that draw men and women and boys and girls to God and to fellowship with Christ in the first place? In other words, why are we Christians at all? Right. And then the second part of that psalm is a different picture. It's of a pilgrim traveling. And of course, once we start the Christian life, we set out on a pilgrimage. And what are those things that transform our journey? And also contrasting that with the secular lifestyle. What is the journey that secular people are making? Right. And the complete utter contrast to the Christian life from the non-Christian life. That, that's what I want to think about in the first two. In the third one, uh, I don't know whether we'll be actually in the building by the third one, but it would be appropriate if we were. It's that sound that begins one, two, two. I was glad when he said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Right. And th thinking of the things that draw us together, why we delight as believers to meet together. What are the special joys of fellowship and meeting together? Psalm 122. And then the, the fourth one I thought, Psalm 115, was really thinking of the secular jibes that we hear today. And in that psalm, the psalmist is asked, where is your God? And really looking at that question, looking at what the secular world is saying, and trying to respond to that, where is your God? How do we answer that question to our neighbors today? So those are the things, at least at the moment, that are in my thoughts. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to it very much, John. And as I say, we're very, very grateful uh, for your willingness to teach us. And we'll be certainly praying that the Spirit will be at work through his words as you bring it to us, uh, whatever medium it is, it is in. 
Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. We look forward very much to being with you all, either through Zoom or in person. Thank, thank you. you.